AMC 10A 2004 problem 4. We're given the following in absolute value inequality and we're trying to find x. So to solve this algebraically, what we can do is we can under we can deduce the range of x for which it will make either side positive or negative. And when dealing with such an inequality, dealing with absolute values, this is usually the best and most efficient way. So first of all, we want to tackle the, the left side. If we want x minus 1, the absolute value, to be greater than or equal to 0, then that means x must be greater than or equal to 1. So if x is greater than or equal to 1, this must mean that x in itself is x minus 1. But for the sake of more generality, let's just do x minus 1 absolute value is greater than 0, not equal to 0. This will reduce the case to be more specific, so x would be greater than 1, meaning if x is greater than 1, then the left-hand side will be positive. But if x is greater than 1, what will happen to the absolute value of x minus 2? Well, there's a certain range for x is greater than 1 for which this is negative and this is positive. If x is greater than 1, but is less than 2, within this range, it will be negative. But if it's x is equal to 3, for example, this will be positive. So we have a subcase if we contain the usage of x is greater than 1 for the right-hand side. So to be more specific, how do you narrow the search down? Well, we realize that if x is greater than 1, it cannot be greater than 2 for the right-hand side to be negative. So instead, let's use the following range. x is greater than 1 and x is less than 2. Within this range, what will happen to the left-hand side? Well, the left-hand side will obviously be greater than 0 because as long as x is not equal to 1, it will be greater than 0. So x minus 1 will be positive. But what about x minus 2? Well, x minus 2, since we're restricting it down to this specific range, then this will always be positive, will be negative. So this will be 2 minus x if we negate x minus 2. So therefore, this will be the same thing as 2x is equal to 3, x is equal to 3 over 2. So this will bring us to answer choice D. But we are not done yet because this is a very specific range. What about the ranges outside of this range? For example, x is greater than or equal to 2, or x is less than or equal to 1. Well, if x is greater than or equal to 2, then that must mean that this will be either 0 or positive. So x minus 2 will be positive. But if it's also greater than or equal to 2, that means the left-hand side will also be positive. So x minus 2 will be the same thing as x minus 1. We cancel out the x, negative 2 is equal to negative 1. That's obviously wrong. So this case will not work. But what about x is less than or equal to 1? Well, if x is less than or equal to 1, then the, the left-hand side will be negative, so 1 minus x. But if x is less than or equal to 1, then that must mean this for the right-hand side will also be negative. So this would be 2 minus x. And again, we cancel out the negative x. 1 is equal to 2. That is also wrong. So therefore, we only have a specific range of x being between 1 and 2 to have a unique and valid solution of 3 over 2. And if you're still not sure, you can brute force the entire thing. You can plug in every single value into the inequality and see if it holds. And if you try that, 3 over 2 will be the only solution. So answer choice D will be our solution.